Yeah, I'm into mm, rap too. Definitely. definitely. We are live, ladies and gentlemen. Recognise those familiar voices, bitches. <laughs> <Yeah>. Knock off <laughs> Nation, we're back again. Knock off regulars Chris, Danny, Briss in the room. First throwdown for return guest of 2017, uh, Kyle Steven. Welcome. Hey. Welcome, Welcome back. back, big fella. And we got the uh, debut of the Few Dime Dizzle. Few Dime Dizzle in the few corner. D- few yeah. Dog Anonymous. Yeah. What's up, big dog? <laughs> Going well, thank you. Yeah. Very nice. Very on, nice. De- on deck for your regu- regular Friday night. Our run rate, admittedly, has been a bit ordinary uh, this it's la- been, last it's couple been a few of weeks. It's, it's been patchy. I feel like we don't need to address yeah. it. I feel like yeah. we address it every time. We should just roll no. on through. We're rocking. Like we're still taking over the world, man. Because <laughs> we've, uh, we've been doing shit. We've been doing shit. <laughs> we've been shit. out That's there hustling yeah. like a motherfucker. We're out there getting some Making stri- money. Yeah. Out there. <laughs> 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 Truth be told, I've worked uh, t- two weeks out of the last three months. So like <laughs> I'm currently collecting unemployment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Join that line, I'm motherfucker. Hey, yeah. <laughs> man, we've been out doing shit, g- gathering shit together. Talk about um, like dealing with people from our like holidays and shit like that. On the return trip from my holiday, <laughs> coming back from Perth, it was a 55 minute delay out of Perth, which turns the four hour flight into a five hour one on the leg home as well. You get there before, spend six and a half hours at like in total traveling and you lose two hours coming home from there too. So it feels like a fucking long day. I had to get over, checked oversized baggage. So I bought a backpack, two pieces of luggage and a golf bag home with me. So I was fucking loaded up at the end of mm. a long shitty day, knowing I'm returning to work the next day. Yeah. Walked straight out of the airport and I haven't hand on heart, haven't caught a taxi in 12 to 18 months. Wow. Just haven't done it. Mm. Just Uber. 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 Yeah. Fucking everything, Mick. Well, Uber, Uber, everything. Mm. And, Go out. The first thing I see is a taxi. I get all my shit. I'm mm. like, it's right fucking there. Just mm. get in. An Uber, I've got to order it. He's got to drive up from fucking DFO or wherever mm. he's parked. Come join airport drive. Shit like that. What wasn't down, jump straight in the taxi. Pulling along airport drive, uh, heading back in towards uh, the city. And for listeners who don't know, like the vicinity we're talking, it's probably three kilometres from like a- airport yeah. drive sort of thing. About that, yeah. And fucking cruise along a couple of hundred metres into the trip. The taxi driver, who was an East, Eastern European gentleman, like it's pretty like small frame, like Jerry Seinfeld looking sort of dude, <laughs> with glasses and shit, and he's like, like "Yo, yeah, Jerry, yeah, yeah, yeah." <laughs> but he's like, just starts sort of looking around inside the taxi, right? Like, like starts so a bit sort of, you can tell his eyes aren't on the road really, and he's looking around at like he's lost something. Oh no! So he's looking in like the like the the middle bit where the uh, the gear stick is and shit, looking on the floor in his door. So he goes, "What do you what do you lost, mate?" He goes. I think I've lost my wallet. I think I've lost my wallet. I'm like, <laughs> How did you oh, lose? mate, like, oh, okay. okay. I was like, looked on the floor on my side, opened the glovey for him and stuff. No, no luck at all. He's like, it must have been in my lab when I opened the boot for you, like it back at the airport. He's like, uh, I, I pull over, you get out at DFO and call another taxi. Oh. I'm like, no, no. fucking <laughs> yeah. way is that happening, pal. I was like, no, not just at the end of my trip too, like just yeah. wasn't in the mood. Yeah. Like, had, like Devil siding on the plane, sort of like out of that now, just not keen, just heading home, <laughs> like not, not in the mood for any shit. And first cab ride I'd had in ages too, yeah, right? Exactly, so yeah. I'm like, don't tell me this is fucking going on now. Trying to convince me to pull over to DFO, I was like, mate, I'm five minutes fucking yeah, in that, yeah, we're in that fucking direction. What, what's the point of dropping me off with all this fucking excess baggage just to wait and go again? I was like, you started a job, need to finish it. And he's just like cutting from like the fourth, cutting over four lanes to pull into like the DFO turnoff. Uh, so ended up in basically in a fucking slanging match with this guy, yeah. <laughs> like back and forth. Did he like, make you get out? Uh, no, fuck no. Oh, no, good, like, no, good, like, good. Shit hit the fan, sort of thing, like proper screaming match, like fucking, <laughs> like me having to get stuck into him. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, it's crazy just having the, like the, an argument with an out and out stranger, yeah. but it happens. He, he was it in a legitimate, happened. legitimate panic attack, and he couldn't see any reason why he shouldn't just ditch me there. He's like, "What? When someone in need, you don't help them." I'm like, "You've started a fucking job that you're paid to do. It's not my fault that you fucked up, mate." Mm. Like, and ended up getting in like a just wasn't it wasn't in the mood for it at all, and he's fucking. Um, Drops you at your yeah, house And you've yeah. just given, given him This huge spray right, yeah. dude just like <laughs> cu- Comes back in 12 hours oh, <laughs> Yeah yeah In, in his civvies like, oh. <laughs> oh hey Oh hey man yeah. Hey man <laughs> oh, no, I don't know. Eastern European as well Oh, like, oh, fucking, oh. oh Jesus yeah, like Russian yeah. samba For the last yeah. 15 years yeah. like. <laughs> Fuck man The next day He threw a uh, Molotov up On my balcony <laughs> <Yeah>. man <laughs> <laughs> 
mate. It would. It would but be. But just the worst. Sorry, sorry. Just sorry, the worst thing off. to not even fucking catch a cab for that long. Black and white cabs, yellow cabs, all those fucking under um, the bus. Un- are under the fucking bus for yeah, Brist this week. Man. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've actually I catch cabs all the time, man, and I, I don't you know tend to have too bad of an experience with them, but. I reckon that Uber is is definitely way way better. I was surprised mm. they had Uber in um in Malaysia in like downtown Penang and oh, shit. Oh really? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. What were they driving? Uh, good cars, man. Dip like tooks. some Toyota thing and some other thing, but um clean and nice. Uh, but when you go to book it, um, they mustn't have PayPal set up because if you if you go through following PayPal, oh, say a transaction good. couldn't yep. be completed. So oh, you got to select okay. cash and you pay pay them cash oh, on delivery. Right. So. It's not like um, it's not like the same sort of you know, th- like pitch that they do with Uber here, where it's like, oh, it's all PayPal, so there's no money changes hands. What was yeah. the price average? Sort so of like cheap, okay, so cheap. Oh, this yeah. one trip, like uh, to the airport from the hostel, was um, forty five off the first cab driver. Then another cab driver did it for forty. The Uber did it for like sixteen or something like that. Oh, yeah. Wow, bring it. Yeah, so, I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> Ringlets. I think it works out to about every thirty thousand ring it is like ten bucks. Or right. Something like that. Ring it back. So ring I reckon I can get the city um, here in like with it within sort of sixteen oh maybe I'm imagining that. Yeah. Is yeah. it? We got yeah. uh, a few dogs speaking off yeah. off mic here. It sounds like shit for all the listeners, just somebody in the background. So uh, I'm gonna hand my mic over to a few dizzle here. I was only really commenting on the cost of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uber and how affordable it was. want to touch on, uh, we're talking about a uh, fishing trip that you boys had only just oh, recently ventured sh- on to uh, the North Island of New Zealand. Yeah. Th- to the uh, Whakaronga. Uh, Whangaroa. 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 Yeah. But the funny thing is, it, it, it's spelt like d- W-H. Uh, W-H, yeah. Mm. yeah Whakatane so. in, yeah, uh, yeah. in New Zealand's like a W-H. Exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah. Everything's yeah. W-H. Dean, Dean W-H. Fare. <laughs> That's all like, I, I, went, I there. went there, I still don't know like how to pronounce it, but it was mm. just insanely pristine, you know. It's just where, it, uh, you know, where is it, Fiui? It's at the very uh, top of the North Island, I suppose. It's up past the Bay of Islands and the Coromandel Peninsula. It's so it's up real up high mic, in New dog. Zealand... Up, up real high in New Zealand on the right-hand side, if you're looking at a world map, isn't it? Yes, correct. Yeah, it's on the eastern coast. Yeah, exactly. And it's just so pristine and there's, like, these enormous cliffs that just, like, encapsulate this bay area. Mm. So it's just, like, imagine just open ocean coming into this bay area and just moving around these super steep cliffs that drop into really deep water. Heaps and heaps of current coming through, like, certain parts and all this sort of stuff. So, effectively, it's fucking open ocean, but just, like, with mm. big structures all around it. Yeah, you cast off the rocks into about 38 metres. Exactly, so. yeah, wow. yeah. 38 metres. It's, a, it's, a, it's the shelf. And so. we, we hired this, and I know it may, it may sound funny, but we hired this houseboat, which pretty much, like, is all right to a certain degree of getting it, like, mm. taking it out sort of thing. And we didn't push it too much, but, like... Um, but to yeah, where you better. can, yeah, where you can like moor this thing, you know, is in open ocean effectively. Like as long as you tuck in behind little like rocky outcrops and, you know, seek shelter from the current and the wind and all that sort of stuff. Mm. And pretty much the one spot that we just sat on the whole time, we King, would just... Kingfish Point. Kingfish Point, man. And Sounds promising. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was just like we'd top, put out this time. Put out big burly bombs and then they would, and just shake them up. And, that, and then they would just dissipate shit out into the water and we'd just catch liveys and then hook them up and then just put liveys down, strip baits, all this sort of stuff. And we were just getting like really, really good snapper. they get enormous How snapper big? there. Like we got them to like I think uh, 67 Six kilo, or something Six centimetres kilo, I think, was maybe the biggest seven one we got. Yeah. But um, so not huge, but like um, you know, imagine. Uh, I mean, I'm holding my hands up, so that's not really good for fucking. <laughs> well, I think that was about 50 <laughs> centimeters. No, an easy, no an easy 65, 67, oh, 67, bro. Yeah. 67, we got. Yeah. But, um, Healthy fish. They, they're, oh, they're shit. very crimson over six, there. Like five kilo or so. Did you sure. eat them on board? We, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, we, definitely. We, we killed enough. Stuck to in. Eat, though. That was it. Nice. We, we smashed. <laughs> we smashed. Um, like fresh uh, wild oysters off the, mm. off the rocks, like just yeah. pulled up the, on the the little tender uh, tender boat. Did you have any sort of bloke with you helping you out? No, no, no. no it was mate. just oh, the oh, boys. Was Nick was there. Just the boys. Oh yeah, Lots just of, the yeah. boys. Lots yeah. of fish. 
Lots of fish? Yeah, lots of, lo- lo- lots of like um, frequency. We had this one afternoon where we were just putting out baits for, for sharks and my mate who, um, who loves fishing for sharks, like um, Matty's, bro- <laughs> Matt, 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 Matty's brother, and he's got, uh, we just pitched out sort of these huge like... Been on a couple of the underground episodes. Yeah, he was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely he was. Yeah, we, we tossed out these huge like snapper frames from like when we would sort of, you know, eat a 65 centimetre snapper and then you just have the frame and, st- and the head and shit. So we took, we just hooked those up on hooks. Yeah, on and a Pakula marlin rig. Yeah, those, like, and it was just this ridiculous. one afternoon where like we would just like toss it out and then you would free spool it and you'd let it drift out 50 metres or whatever and you'd just let it keep drifting and it would slowly peel out line and then just every – would have been – 10 minutes at most because we had the radio cranking mm. like and it was just every – after five minutes, 10 minutes of having the bait out, you would just hear this screaming run <laughs> like and we'd just sit there like – and with sharks, you just let them run. You just yep. let them run for ages with the bait like once they've picked it up. So like they're sitting there on this, on this big rod and it's just hissing, you know, like I mean because this thing's just <laughs> – like heading off and then like Tim, was it Tim that um, hooked into the first one? Yeah, Tim caught Definitely, the first. yeah. yeah the, it was a seven gill. The, yeah. We all caught seven gills. Yeah. Well, that, that one that got explain, off. The, explain that for one listeners that, what a seven gill is. Seven gills like a, uh, a fairly big shark. Like um, it would grow, grow to about probably two or th- two and a half, three metres long, oh, you know. like easy. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're a smaller brother I think to the bronze whaler. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, the one that Tim caught, I, I don't – that one that he hooked first up. First shark was the biggest by Yeah, far. I don't, I don't think it. that was no seven gill, man. We dominated those seven gills on the heavy gear and, like, that thing that Tim had was in a, a, a league of its own, you know. That Fuck. one was – like, seriously, like, Tim not, is – Not getting anywhere. Exactly. And Tim is a big guy who can throw down some punishment. And it would take 200-metre w- runs. <laughs> 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 at home, in, at home, in, in the boat. <laughs> in what context? <laughs> uh, he, he was putting on some. He was putting some hurt on this thing and on like a real, real tight drag, and it was just fucking dominating him. And Fuck. it ended up biting through like four steel streams. Cable. Of, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Through yeah. steel cable. Razor sharp. Yeah. So I, I'd have been interested in in those parts of the world. There's all sorts of great white sharks. There's yeah. you know bronze world record, whalers. World there's, record bronze whaler was exactly. caught about 400 meters from where we were. Huge marlin, and yeah. they don't call it island King, called Peach Island. Yeah. They don't yeah. call it Kingfish Point for nothing <laughs> because like where the current rips around every dawn we would and it's fucking cold like um. Dawn would break and we'd just like jump in these like these kayaks off the back of the the houseboat and then just paddle out into like around that like headland and you just have like your rod in between your knees like in free spool like and a and a huge live like a big live yakker or a slimy or a car wire or car something with like the that flavor, yeah yeah. And you just have your rod between your legs and you just be paddling this fucking <laughs> kayak like in the cold, cold water and then like just anticipating getting hit. And then um, – and we lost a few – like a lot, lost a few. Dave, uh, Fuey's brother, got one at the, at the, the very end. The only kingfish that time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got one. But the kawai were fascinating because you can, you can throw out any size kawai for bait. They start quite small, like not much bigger than a herring size, I suppose, and then they get – you can throw out a bait 45, 50 centimetres and then a car wire only 20 centimetres yeah. bigger than it, like maybe a 70 centimetre car wire will hit it, kill the fish, hook up and then you just upgrade on this thing and you're like, you guys are ferocious. They're ferocious. They oh. are ferocious. Yeah. You put out like... They see like, something panic in the yeah. water, they're just in. Yeah. Like, right. You pull, mm. put out like li- small car wire that you catch like as liveies and like you'll catch big car wire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's just a ruthless, a ruthless like, place all, to be. All in all, in terms of affordability for a holiday, New Zealand seems pretty fucking on point too, right? We spent like, a thousand bucks. We spent a thousand bucks and that was like food, um, you know, flights, accommodation. That's like, unbelievable. Yeah, it would have been yeah. about that. Would Divided up well, we, we probably crammed more bodies than we should have in the little boat. Yeah, as you do. No, as re- you do. No, on, re- no on, regrets. On houseboats. Awesome. Was it better than the Cruzy Fox? 
I've, oh. I've definitely stayed on a few houseboats. Yeah. <laughs> Cruzy Fox was. Uh, it was pretty good that houseboat. Yeah, yeah. It was the, a little bit bigger than for the, the listeners. Fox. Was a was a houseboat we stayed on. Uh, used to be at one point was an annual fishing tournament called the Winter Classic amongst yeah. the boys. Where yeah, the one Chris nearly crashed into the Tim. Into oh the yeah, wall? Uh, yeah. Well, who Tim, was driving uh, them? Was that Tim? Chris, Chris did crash into the wall that trip. The first trip. Did the, I? The inaugural the, the, the Clarence. Trip. <laughs> the Clarence. The Clarence. No, the, the first was one, it? the one before that. No, 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 no. That was um like. Grant was there. Grant, you were there. that was Grant driving. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with you yeah. encouraging him yeah. to the night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? So yeah, the boys had hired a hired a houseboat. Basically. H- hired a houseboat first um, first fishing trip, and then we got there of a night time, and it was like four four of us. Few, yeah, few and they don't included. induct you at night. Like you got to yeah. you got to stay in the harbour. <laughs> yeah. At night. Before you can move the house, but exactly. it's frustrating because we didn't couldn't turn up till after work, and we had to pack all our gear and shit. It was like ten thirty before we got down there, but you know, like they said, we could camp, like we could stay on the boat anyway as long as it stayed in the harbour, sort of thing. So like we got got down there, and we're just full of beans, and you know, like really excited and shit. So we just see if the like the engine works and and whatnot. So like just fired it up and we're like, oh yeah, we can get this thing going, you know, like let's just take it for a little bit of a like spin inside the, you know, like inside the marina here sort of thing. And then so like we got going, I think Fury and uh, like my, uh, my mate Morrow had fallen asleep on the, um, on, on the deck and then like Grant just goes driving out and I'm just right, right up on the bow and it's like this really low slung like old school houseboat. So I'm up on the bow sort of up the front and and Grant's just like like just slowly like building the throttle. <laughs> Not up. a bad boat engine yeah. right there, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it's dark as and then I'm just like look at looking at this huge like rock break wall that like pretty much like channels you out of the marina sort of thing, you know, like takes a dog leg and you know shows you the way out <laughs> and like. Grant's just like flooring it for this thing and then we're probably about, you know, 70 metres away and I'm just like, and he's still like increasing the speed and I'm just like, hey man, like careful <laughs> of this wall. Like he's like, wall? Like, and then <laughs> I was just like, mate, start like fucking there's a wall, like drop it in reverse, drop it in reverse. So like we've started like screaming at that like at that point like to each other just to <laughs> at the urgency of the like, you know, like, hey man, like so Fury and Morrow are like, Diving out of bed like in a panic sort of Everybody thing. Everybody brace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's exactly what it was like, man. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, and then we just, he just like full throttles in reverse and, and, the, and the fucking boat. Backs up on the rock. Yeah, it just goes slowly, slowly, slowly into the wall and to the point where you're just like a metre or so away and you're like, ooh, and then it stops and starts moving back and I was just like, oh, shit. <laughs> True. If you wreck up there, you're in the local paper and shit. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And especially yeah. at that stage too, because like none of us would have had any money. No, you know. So <laughs> like, and, and, we're, <laughs> we're like, and it would have been a huge, yeah, huge deal to you know. You did. I don't know what you. Hey, mate, we've just plowed us straight into the fucking <laughs> seat into the <laughs> into the wall, mate. Oh. <laughs> Fuck that phone call. Yeah, 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 fuck that phone yeah. call, man. You had a uh, story like you, on the uh, New Zealand trip, a uh, story about a stick mag that was fucking <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that I left it in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, um, we, we got this. Um, obviously, we were getting the houseboat. So, like, um, we were at this service station and then um, I figured, you know, like, no houseboat trip, boys' houseboat trip is going to be complete without a stick mag. So like got this got this stick mag and as all like you know porn mags are they're just pretty much like in oh no actually not all of them but some of them are you know in a black sleeve or a completely like blanked out sleeve so I'm like with an X on got to be a good one yeah, yeah. with an X on I'm like this is gonna be this is gonna be good sort of thing bought it on the boat and then ripped it open and it was like just <laughs> this BBW magazine like with just all these enormous women just like and. Full parting lips and all, all sorts of disgusting <laughs> shit, and like everybody on the boat, like had, had a good look through it. And then towards the, and then at the end, the funniest part of all is that none of us meant to, but like we meant trying to, to just pick the prettiest of all these ugly birds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 picking, picking which ones we'd actually sleep with. Yeah, uh, you get tired of fishing, walk inside. <laughs> 
<laughs> Someone's lying on the couch flicking through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Paying good yeah. attention. Yeah. Uh, that's that's what happens. Keep you company on those lonely yeah. sea nights. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what happens when you get bored on like because you are you're trapped in a really small confined environment where you've really just got to th- like think of things to do. And and if you've got a, like a, a magazine or something interesting to look at, you're gonna look at it. Mm. But yeah, that was a good trip, man. And the same, you know, the same shit happened to us at the and window. We left it on the boat, mate. Like at, at the drive. Yeah, at the, that is at hilarious. The captain's yeah. wheel. Yeah. There's like this little left rack with the the, all the instructions <laughs> and things like that, just tucked in neatly <laughs> yeah. at the back. <laughs> yeah, someone's be like, like, oh, one of these deckies was a. Bit of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> someone's kids are like looking yeah. through the bloody looking yeah. through the books for something to read and comes across the <laughs> BBW magazine. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> But um, do we, is there any UFC on this weekend? No, there's no, nothing now till uh, the following weekend. Uh, DC Rumble. Is that right? It yeah. feels like it's been a dry spell. Yeah. Has it been? A little bit, though, just because there wasn't any last weekend. Sometimes yeah, they can take a weekend weeks. off now, Shit. and it just seems like well, that's two the weeks cards off. are that frequent now. It used to be like. Once or twice a month, max. Mm. I reckon we would have cards. Yeah, you had to wait a long time in mm. between yeah. watching old fights and stuff. And it's not that, and that's okay too, because it sort of fucking wets your beak again for next week, right? Like you, you're keen to dive in because especially that card too. Mm. That's a, that's a big main event. Yeah. Mm. Do you think? Do you think DC or Rumble, man? I've always been Anthony Johnson, and I'd like to say he can get it done, but and, and I think he can. Like DC is getting to an age now where you can potentially see guys. Get old overnight and shit. Mm. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like D- DC is yeah. beatable. Like John showed that, and Anthony cracked him really hard in that first oh, fight shit, as well. Yeah. Like he slung him across the octagon and proved that DC can take a hell of a shot. Like Absolutely, take, taking nothing away from Daniel Cormier because I think he could move to heavyweight right now and probably win a title if he if he really wanted to. Mm. You know what I mean? That's a that's a statement as well. I think Cormier could be the heavyweight champion. Absolutely, right now if he got the right fights and got the weight of the title. Yeah, right. definitely, mate. So I, I I don't even think he. You know, Francis Ngannou would have something to say about that. Ooh, yeah, that's he very would. True. What, a, what a fight that what a fight that would be. But oh, I'd say DC goes into this next matchup as a deserving favorite, having beaten him before and with a, a gun record. But my. I've got to cheer for Anthony Johnson. I'd love to see Rumble be and new just to shake things up a bit as well and to set up a fight with John Jones. Yeah, yeah. Where Jones Rumble would be John Jones comeback fight with a bit of ring rust. Like let's face it, against OSP John Jones, there was a bit of ring rust there. You felt like for him against that OSP mm. performance. I don't think that it's, was necessarily his best performance. Still won the fight, but an aggressive Rumble who's been active against a John Jones coming off a break. Fuck, man, that would be uh, – Rumble could get him there as well and get to, like, legend status. And vice versa with DC. You know, like, I, I think that if DC stays active and, so, and somehow it goes through Anthony Johnson again, that that fight with John Jones is just so hyped up that, you know, that that's going to sell, you know. And, and that's the time that DC wants to fight him because he's just had this ultra-long layoff, had a real disappointing f- display against, um, against LSP, like you said. And that's really what the only fight that he's had, you know, outside of jiu-jitsu tournaments. But I think if he fights a guy like Anthony Johnson, he's he's going to get it done a lot easier because even though all fights start on the feet, I reckon he would John, – Jones would submit him and submit him quickly. You know, he would absolutely just grapple him and then just grab his neck and choke him. Yeah, I watched the highlights of the um, first fight of theirs not so long ago and fuck, man. Jones was taking him down at will, like nobody had ever DC. before. Eh? Yeah, 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 true. Yeah, I've only ever watched it once. And, oh yeah, right. Mm. <clears throat> I think I've seen it a couple of times, but yeah. And then DC gets that um, takedown, like finally at the end. But John bounces straight back up. Like it, it was yeah. like almost, it was like just mocking the, him. Yeah, yeah. T- took him down at will. Uh, Chris Weidman, Gay Guard Masasi, came main event on that. That fight. is uh, that's a mad, a mad fight. fight. That could dead set be a fight of the year candidate sort of thing, like a, a super entertaining one. Like, yeah, let's see lovely, what uh, yeah. Chris Weidman's got, man. Weidman like, needs a defining that fight for it him. It is. Yeah. This is a, a could be one of the big moments in Chris Weidman's career. He is uh, in desperate need of a W. Not well, not desperate need, but for his own personal confidence, he's in need of for a, the a for w. the title campaign for sure, man. Because Definitely. that is a fucking shark tank. Oh, there are so say. many people at middleweight that like if you. You know, aren't red hot, then you're going to get overtaken yeah. by somebody. Gagard is. is 
really fucking good. That's what I mean. Is <laughs> so this could, this like, could be a number one contender mm, fight? Like yeah. in, in in any other time, this might be uh, a title fight. Yeah, you know, like I mean, these guys are the best of the best at one eighty five. You yeah. know, there are, yeah. there is no better really. Yeah. Like Danny said, the competition is just so tight with like mm. your Yoel Romero's and your Luke Rockholds and your Weidmans and your Misasis and your Bispings, Jacques Array, Saint Pierre, and yes, Saint, Saint, Saint Pierre, like. It's middleweight has just done the biggest Robert turnaround Whittaker. of mm. any division. Fucking savage. I, I, Aussie out there just fucking battling amongst all yeah. those fucking monsters. Like if I he if he beats like, Jacare, he could fight the winner of Weidman Musasi. Yeah. <laughs> that's you know crazy. I mean? that's, they could it, still be waiting. Like yeah. they'll it's hard to see how one eighty five mention Anderson uh, Silva. Yeah. 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 Or Yoel. Uh, I mentioned yeah, you Yoel. Did Yoel. 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 Sorry, Yoel. sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I fucking mentioned Corey, Yoel. Corey. Huh? Allegory. Corey. Oh, yeah, mate, that division has just gone, uh, done a U-turn effectively. I mean, there was arguably a time where, you know, Anderson probably couldn't find competition at his mm, level in mm. that division, you know, when it was sort of... Fighting Forrest Griffin and stuff. Fighting Forrest Griffin, certainly. I mean... He, he Although fought, Forrest Griffin was like not, not like doing too badly the time he fought Anderson. Oh, mate, he just, just lost a title to Rashad. Yeah. That was his comeback, his next fight yeah. after losing the title to Rashad. No, I'd, I'd heard that he had been knocked out twice in that camp yeah. before fighting yeah, Anderson. I, 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 I heard Forrest Griffin, of that as well. Which is not what you want to hear. No, yeah. He no. got starched twice in the camp and he's there That's swinging. Um, have you guys, so have you guys seen that documentary on Netflix, um, The Hurt Business? No, not yet. It's fucking no. pretty good, man. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, Kevin Costner narrates it or whatever, but they, they cover like a few dudes from like different organizations and stuff, but a lot of UFC. John's in it. John's in it. They sort of like track it. It sort of goes up right to the time. It covers him doing the hit and run and um, and then it finishes with him getting popped. Um, Pre-DC. Pre-DC. Right. It's a doco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Okay. But um, and it follows a bunch of other dudes from lesser or, lesser known organizations that you wouldn't have heard of, and it goes really um, well into like their financial and yeah. medical situations and shit. It's like it's quite eye, eye opening. Oh, it would be man. It would be. Mm. They'd be so injured all the time. You know, you would come yeah. home from training at the end of the day and. You know, if you were girlfriend or whatever to one of those those sort of guys, they would just be banged up constantly. They'd be like, get home and sort of, you know, hey, where's the ice pack? Where's the heat pack? And then know, particularly like, the situation of not like having any other skill that can make you an income mm. other than doing that. So you like your hands are tied um, and you sort of, you know, you're fading physically, but you're, you're depending on it financially. So it's like you have to keep going. That's it's it, man. it's uh, such another, a nasty uh, cycle. Another MMA documentary... Like, or it can go really well for you. It can be Conor McGregor, barely have been knocked out and, and be sitting on the, multiple millions. The mm. 1%. Like, yeah. The, the 1%. Like, Luckiest but he, man. But he's, um, those lucky charms, those, man. Like the, I completely forgot where I was going with that. But um, <laughs> yeah. Dad, Dad the 1%. Hygie, yeah. Dad Hygie, yeah, Dove. That's it. That, that, <laughs> that Cypress Hill. Oh. Uh. Where yeah, my that, snare? that is the worst. I have no snare. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, it's a good documentary, man. Check it out. It's um, it's worth a watch. What was it again? The Hurt Business. Mm. That's right. Mm. It's been some weather around for all, oh, the, all the Queenslanders. I hope, yeah. I hope you're looking after yourselves up there in Central Queensland. For any listeners up there, I know we had um, a few crew in the Mount Isa Fire Station that were listening at one point. So no Shout doubt out. those boys mm. might have headed inland and got a bit busy mm. in the last couple of days. So all the SES workers, there was a... Uh, Cyclone that hit the uh, tropical North Queensland and even filtered down to Brisbane too. We got an absolute shit ton of rain yesterday, but um, New South Wales as well, man. And, like, like uh, these underwater right now, yeah. Like I think northern the, Northern yeah. rivers, like through that region, it just uh, couldn't handle it, could it? It's no. like twelve year highs that they're getting yeah. through tides and and all the rain just horrific. So we're thinking of you. Saw on the news that um, they were saying Hins Dam down the Goldie is um, is at the highest level it's ever been, ever. Seen the uh, Yatla Pie Shop underwater today? True, the yeah. one side of the highway. Yeah, there. the I- iconic, oh, iconic Yatla. Shit. Just, just the Logan. Oh, like, it wouldn't be the Logan. It'd be the Narang River. Narang River. Would it, yeah. Would it be, uh, no, like no, no, no. I reckon it would be the Logan River actually, because that's yeah. I reckon it'd be some sort of stretch of that. But I'll try and find a, uh, a demographic for. Uh, I read yeah. something the other day that Logan City was like it was like top six most populous cities in Australia. I don't know if that was a bad source or not. Population. 
populous, like largest oh, population, really? like yeah, you know, maybe. Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Fuck that, Perth, that Adelaide. Right. No way, surely. Logan City, Gold Coast, <laughs> like. <laughs> It doesn't sound right, does it? I was shocked when I read it, but... Because if you think about... Maybe. Like, if you stacked people maybe. Vert- vertically, you could store more of them, but... <laughs> yeah. so, that's <laughs> the old Chinese method. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that human centipede. Yeah. Oh. That surface paradise model, baby. <laughs> yeah. Basically, just that city model. Yeah. Oh, exactly. How's, how's yeah. like, uh, those cities... Like, sh- uh, is um, Shanghai one of them, like, when, it, when it's classed as a megalopolis or something like that? It's no longer, like, a metropolis. Yeah, it's, like, right. a, like, New York would be one, Shanghai. The most populous place I went to was Chongqing in China. And there's 31 million people there. Oh. In the province. There's, like, the old Chongqing city or township on the water and then... The city's evolved and grown around it, and I suppose it'd be like drawing a string from the Brisbane CBD, maybe eight, uh, and, and included parts of the Gold Coast and maybe parts of the North Coast. No, yeah. bigger, no bigger than yeah. that. Like yeah, maybe 200k wide. Yeah, and there's 31 million <laughs> people. Fuck. Oh, Holy wow. shit! Yeah. Holy shit! It was insane. I've never Imagine seen that, like how many extra roads and shit would had to would had to have had been built like at all different levels you know like okay we just need to keep going underground tunnel under this tunnel under this tunnel under this yeah. overpass over this like oh we have a hundred roads where there used to be one sort of thing yeah your, eng- your city planning and your engineering goes yeah, to another like a big level beehive mm. of people absolutely and and that that is the, really the only way forward is is really to do that sort of shit and you know if you think about where human society is going to be in another two three thousand years if we make it that long like i mean imagine what new york city would have to have infrastructure wise three thousand years mm. from now to mm. accommodate that many people yeah. would have to have all sorts of underground networks and you yeah. know tube networks in the sky and shit we can't even imagine because yeah. it's just fucking out straight of out of the jetsons life yeah, yeah. yeah. well yeah three thousand years mm. absolutely look at I that mean, the, did you ever watch the jetsons growing up uh, no. I'm aware of no. what it is. Before my time, yeah, no. oh, right. I feel like no, anyway. No, anyway, sorry, yeah, the, got, just um, got your mad off topic. The um, <laughs> fucking <laughs> Flintstones and shit. Flintstones, I feel like I came in at the tail end of. It wasn't really my thing. My thing was like Simpsons and the Rugrats. Mm. I was, remember oh, Rugrats? I definitely remember oh, yeah. Rugrats. Rugrats were Rugrats. huge. Phil and Lil. Yeah. Uh, Chucky. Tom, Tommy Pickles, man. Tommy Angelica. He was the man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Angelica like was a, a fucking gangster, bitch. Like. Was gutsy as yeah, shit, wasn't he? Angelica was that... Pesky two year <laughs> two year old, you yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah, older than yeah. picking on them. <laughs> <shit. laughs> yeah. Phil and Lil, their mum was looked like a uh, big transgender bird. Like. <laughs> 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 Remember her with the short hair, the short purple yeah, hair. Yeah, she was Wore like the overall. She was a single mother too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How you go, yeah. <laughs> Dari Munchella? Like, yeah. yeah, they like, like they broke down the parents cool in mm. those in those cartoons because they made jokes like adult jokes within. A P, uh, like a yeah. P, uh, G rating, like yeah. Yeah. even C rating, yeah. like children, yeah, like, yeah. 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Just through stereotypes, yeah. stereotypes and like archetypes, characters yeah. and shit. That's what makes like a, a show or a movie mm. or something. That's why the Coen Brothers are so good because their characters are so good. Who are the Coen Brothers? Oh, uh, they've made like the Big Lebowski, No Country for Old oh, Men, like Fargo, a, a heap of different, mo- a that. heap of different famous. You haven't famous seen movies. Fargo? I don't think oh, so. Probably there, would have. Steve, Steve Buscemi and the and the dude off Con Air are both uh, oh. out in like uh, Minnesota and shit, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's fucking yeah eh? oh, <laughs> oh, I actually man. don't think I have seen Dead that. Set of, Maybe. Uh, anyway, they make. Some fucking beast mode movies. They're my favorite filmmaker, but um, like a lot of their movies, like The Big Lebowski, is love like that movie. yeah, you love that movie, but there's not much of a storyline to it really. It's a real simple storyline, but well, it's because of the back. characters. Mm. Like you got John Goodman, the fucking like, yeah. the fuck does this have to do with f- Vietnam, Walter? <laughs> <laughs> Everything's always a fucking travesty with you. Like, Put the gun away, Walter. <laughs> They're calling the cops, man. <laughs> like, oh just, man, John Goodman. Yeah, yeah, I'll take a beer, man. I'll yeah. take a beer. Because <laughs> you just you think about that sort of situation where if you just had like a, the oddest couple that you do have this creepy like Spanish fucking pedophile dude at the bowling alley hanging out with. Like, but the thing is, dude, that shit would exist, man. Oh, you would definitely. go out into the middle American yeah. bowling alleys in little back places Absolutely. and drinking a beer, and you would just be like those those like they say writers are people who just like. They're ultimate sticky beaks. They're always watching what other people are doing and shit because they just love to like study it. 
and like uh, and they would that those sorts of characters if you went out looking for them they would exist man you know like the fuck like somebody's telling you the story this yeah eight year olds dude got done for fucking touching to somebody up in, up in the thing or they made him go to, up, <laughs> introduce to everyone in the neighborhood he was a petter ass <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he's just like fucking real flamboyant like bowling dude like <laughs> don't nobody fuck with the Jesus <laughs> yeah and that's it. There would definitely be people that would be like that out there, and you just and you see them all the time, man. Like I see them on the you see them on the train at least once a week. Yeah, you, you know? get some good um, you get some uh, good train Snapchats uh. of people doing weird <laughs> shit. Yeah, people people are. I guess if you're exposed to a lot of people on a frequent basis in mm. terms of public transport travel. Yeah. Oh well, bound, you look at do you look at those videos like new, the New York Nico um, Instagram account for anybody who is not following? Get on that shit. It's fucking gold. And he's like, it's so much um, footage from the the subways there, man. People just doing the weirdest shit, like performers in the stations and then just you know people just doing weird shit like a lot of people will just work out on the train you see people in there doing full workouts on the bars and stuff like that really yeah that's crazy yeah new, at new, new york, york nico get amongst it and i see uh it's so good it's just like slice of life this dude's just on an iphone camera recording like heaps of street shit in um in new york and it's like there's just like crazy motherfuckers everywhere like in a place like that you know there's just people on the street just constantly doing crazy shit like trying to get people's attention or have you ever seen those um those videos of the where people just climb up real high on those real high structures and just hold on by like their yeah. their hands and it's probably got a name i just don't know what it is but oh jesus like you look at some of those photos and just lose your stomach of, of just the risk that some people are, are willing to take. You know, just enormous, enormous drops. And I wonder yeah. if people would have died doing it. I definitely. look at a lot of that, like, parkour and shit like that, and it's like, fuck. It looks so fucking dangerous. It looks like you could just, like, smash all your teeth through the oh, back exactly. of your neck, like, with one one false finger slip, you know, that, that sort of shit that they do. <laughs> but, um, yeah, some dudes are confident in it, man, and they do it well. Yeah, yeah. The I one guess... out of the ten that pull off look yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all on concrete too. Which the climb just cranes me and off, shit, like... though, is what you're talking about. The crane climbing and shit like that, where yeah. they get up on a scaffold. and oh, the edge yeah. of building, doing handstand. Yeah, like, exactly, and, you know, out. man, exactly. Yeah, like a what, guy what, dangle you and they mm, run around. Yeah, there's video yeah. footage of a dude on like a, um, what do you call those things, like a uh, uh, seg- Segway? Yeah. Like, or where you just stand on it, but like you just lean, like you don't actually it's have like a handle like, or anything, and it's just uh, fucking like, um, oh, well, the standing platforms, yeah, yeah. Seen like a couple do, in the CBD, doing like, doing like, sort of like spinning around on the on the edge of the building and sort of like doing little maneuvers and shit. And I'm like, bro, like you might be confident, but that's still a piece of electronics, you know, yeah. <laughs> like that that might like just freak out and on you and just you're dead. Mm. And it'd just be such a long fall. Yeah. I wonder at what point you'd die, whether it would be once you reached a certain velocity or, or whether you when you hit the concrete. I reckon, you'd, yeah, you wouldn't. there wouldn't be like, ooh, I'm hitting the concrete. It'd be, it'd be a huge mm. rush of gravity yeah. right at the very end. You wouldn't feel anything. Nah, yeah. Your body would just switch off and like, I, I, honestly, I honestly think just it'd like... I reckon you pass out yeah. from maybe oxygen deprivation, yeah, I potentially. Think the, uh, you, you know how you from say... that high. How up? high? Those those clips like say where you, like you're seeing people like the twin, building, like twin towers, building, you, twin towers. You, you mightn't pass. Off. Yeah, you're talking you pass seven, from seventy to a hundred stories that those guys do it do it from. Mm. Like He's got a um, huge. I think how, how tall is a story in a me, in meters? Three meters. Three yeah. meters, right? Yeah. Three, so three three maybe. Th- oh, yeah. Three times seventy. What would that be? Or three times even two hundred and ten meters. Yeah. Like. Oh shit! Look yeah. at the arithmetic yeah. on <laughs> few dogs spitting. <laughs> yeah, this, um, Glad nobody asked me that question. I, I think I've, I've heard though through uh, dimethyltryptamine, like being the last sort of feeling that you face, uh, the last sort of like trip that you take in the uh, before passing away. Conscious like, state, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've like Steve Jobs, like he's laying in his bed, going like, "Oh wow, like oh wow, oh wow," and just passed, end up passing away. I still think even jumping off an object like that, say if you slipped off on your segway at the, like the top of the building. I think you'd probably get to that state before you like at euphoria, impact, like, like that yeah. last. Yeah, I, I can't help but think that. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I guess it would depend, like, yeah, if, like, how accepting of the situation that was happening that you were. Like, if you're going down on a plane, do you, like, do you begin to just, like, bliss out? (laughs) (laughs) Or, that's true. Right. What what were the instructions on the life jacket again? No point panicking. Yeah. 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 So, like, actually, on the way back from Malaysia, I I flew from Penang to um, Kuala Lumpur, and it was like, the worst turbulence that I've ever been in in my life. It was fucking scary as shit. Like a uh, full-on electrical storm with just driving rain. Um, my girlfriend and I are sitting on the wing of the plane like looking out and there's like fucking rain like whipping off the plane and, and literally no shit, like bolts of lightning hitting the wing and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Oh, absolutely. And, um, and, and sort of being timed with these really hectic drops that would just continue, like they wouldn't sort of reset quickly like they normally do. You drop like about three times and then like just just steady yourself and we're sort of looking at each other like, holy, holy fucking shit, like mm-hmm. this could be it. Like, And I, I was legit started going through like, okay, what do we do now in my yeah, head? And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. The, the row in front of us, I'm pretty sure you meant to have people sitting on the fucking exit, emergency exits, like, <laughs> yeah, I would have like at, so. at whatever. Yeah, I would have no, sat actually, there if no one else was. Absolutely yeah. you are. Yeah, yeah and nobody, and we, so we were, we were like a, a row behind it, so nobody was sitting in that in that seat. Oh, so I was like, yeah. fuck, I'm probably the closest person to this emergency exit here yeah. in all actuality. And I was like, I didn't, didn't listen to the fucking safety briefing at all. I was reading my book and you shit. You were in the seat. I reckon, and then, I, reckon um, I could rip one of those cunts open in two seconds flat. <laughs> like, just because, like, yeah. you were just... They the were, well, well, they like design them so. Yeah, they design them so that they're idiot-proof. So, the, the first mean. thing you grab on it comes off, exactly. and then the next thing comes off as well. So, yeah. that was basically all it was. But I was sort of, look, like, looking at where the oxygen would come down from. I felt if there's actually a life vest under my seat. Yeah. And then I was like... Do, which order do I do this shit in? Am I doing the oxygen mask as we're going down or like, and I was like actually mm. going through the motions, like, you know, potentially we're over water here. So if we can, you know, somehow float for long enough, like thinking about this sort of shit, man, it was quite, a, quite an intense experience. Wow. Like, um, when I, when we touched back down, I, um, I felt like this deep sense of relief, like having my feet on, on solid ground. And I was kind of like a little bit jittery from it mm. for like a couple of minutes up, up the, up the sort of runway or whatever. Mm. Oh yeah, definitely. And, and it's, it's weird. You've situation. had a fucking harrowing. You had the oxygen had a, mask deployed, definitely, haven't Definitely, man. I had one on the way back from Townsville, which was, you know, pretty, pretty hairy as well, which was like, you know, out of... <clears throat> <clears throat> pretty much out of nowhere just you know while we're still f- sailing along smoothly the oxygen masks drop down and then like within must have been like two to three seconds or something like that like almost immediately like uh, a notice has come over the pa like um crew prepare for an um, uh, like uh prepare for an emergency landing and then we've just like gone into these like with the oxygen mask dangling, like gone into this one big drop and then we've just bottomed out and just gone boom, like and just like leveled out and like everyone's just, people like start screaming and shit like this and then we just go like drop into another one like that was just like Whoa. real, real, real hectic. Like, and then we're just like yeah, just oh. weightless like with the oxygen mask there then like – Boom! Like so you levels just out you again. just grab the oxygen mask and put it on. I, I d- not until we leveled out on the second one because man, like I couldn't like I wasn't coordinating anything. You Did know? it like, fall down? Yeah, it's like they're swinging around our heads. Yeah. And <laughs> how, how, are you, how are you feeling at the time? <laughs> Jesus, oh, I, 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 I calmed down real quick after, but while it was happening, you just can't help but panic, yeah, you know, yeah. like, cause you're in a plane and you think you're about to crash. Like mm. the oxygen. So did you just put around. the oxygen mask on for the selfie that you took? <laughs> no. <laughs> so like we, when we, when there actually was a selfie of Chris wearing the oxygen mask, yeah. like thumbs up and then caption like, yeah, just nearly died or whatever. When we, when we leveled out, when we leveled out on the second one, that's when like the plane was stable. So that's when like all the, the whole fucking plane is like pulling their oxygen masks on and shit like this. And like, and then we're just sort of sailing along and no one knows what's happening. And we're just like sailing along for like what must have probably only been, you know, like five or 10 minutes or whatever, but before they told us anything, but we're all just freaked out, not knowing what's going on. The lady next to me was just like in absolute tears, like um, there were heaps of heaps of people crying. Like, um, Some dude spewed like behind me. He was obviously yeah, using the bag. I just heard yeah. heard and smelt spew. It was just like, oh, great. 
I would have spewed if I was on that. Yeah. I would have spewed. That definitely. weightless feeling in your guts. Oh, where, oh you can feel there, your stomach yeah, there come was, up into your rib cage. Yeah, oh. we looked at each other at one point and it was just like, are you fucking serious? Like, is this like, whoa, okay. This yeah, is fucking intense. Yeah, rock and roll. Yeah, exactly. Especially something about, back to what you were saying before about the, it's because it's a situation that you, you're, <clears throat> really have no control over Like there's this um, Yeah you're totally Just at the whim Of whatever yeah. fucking happens exactly. Strapped into a chair Like Yeah <laughs> The crazy thing Flying into that location as well Like what the, the fuck Is that life that's gonna do Like when the mm. Fuel explodes and shit do, Yeah do not yeah, <laughs> Do not inflate Until you're off the aircraft <laughs> You're there like, blowing like, it up Like with the whistle mm. and shit Like oh, Straight no, nah, But yeah. that's the thing Like w- What do you reckon Would be worse like if they knew that they were going down and you were going into the ocean, so they would a- were able to like drop fuel and shit on the way um, on the way down, or being like you know close to takeoff or or landing where the fuel was still attached and and you have a crash, more like a car crash on the runway type of thing, where it, where it blows up and you've got to die. No, well, if you've got to die, then it defeats the purpose. Oh. But I guess the risk of dying is, you know, you, this oh, is what so the you, question you, the, lies the heart of the so question. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, yeah, it'd totally depend. I think I'd prefer. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> we were watching, me and Maddie were watching Sicarios yesterday, comparing what do you think would be worse, like being forced to tag along on a tactical mission in um, as like part of DEA in, in Mexico oh, at no. night with night vision goggles on and shit no. and an AK or um, or stepping in with Anthony Rumble Johnson in a cage match. Oh, I'd take, take the fight. You'd <laughs> <take> the fight. <laughs> you'd knock me out yeah. in like yeah. 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 five, yeah. ten seconds. And Even if you're brain damaged, you're probably <laughs> yeah. going to probably it'd, gonna. Live. It'd be like falling off the Empire State where we were talking about before. It'd just be like you wouldn't even feel it. Mm. But what like, if you were going in with like unconscious. America's best fucking SWAT team? It'd be like, unreal to ever. witness. It would be unreal but, if you uh, could. If, <laughs> I don't want to get shot. If you, yeah, <laughs> but if you just hung back, like if you hung back behind, like so, somebody had the job to protect you. I reckon even if if, if you talk it's like a reporter nearly. There's yep. some cool movies out there about the reporters. In <laughs> yeah, there's that one with Margot Robbie. She's an mm. fuck yeah. <laughs> she that Brisbane bird that was on uh, the Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, yeah. There's an awesome movie about um, journalists living abroad uh, in wartime uh, with okay. her in it. It's True. Boss. What's mm. it called? Fuck, did I know? <laughs> 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 Somebody out there looked that up. Yeah, that'd be dope. It, it, it'd definitely be a cool experience, I think. Like, uh, even though it would be horrible, uh, I think that in a weird way to give you some like sort of real, real cultural awareness of of what things were like out there. Like I remember what what you were talking about before about um there was a guy that was on I forget what his name is, maybe it's Jocko Willing from on the Tim Ferriss podcast, but he talks about like um that they did a study of like the stress hormones in, you know, pe- people who have control over situations and don't, right? And they so they tested the the people that were obviously probably going to have it the most, which were like people in a military situation. And they would have this base and then they would take blood samples from all the people that that were at the base like and there were like trained Navy SEALs there and all this sort of stuff. And then there was the the people there that were trained – that were looking after the Navy SEALs and, you know, making the food and, you know, cleaning the clothes and and all that sort of stuff. And – they tested the stress hormones of them as the, you know, at base levels and then told them that, that when there was like an imminent attack like that, that was planned on that base at some stage within the next three hours or whatever and like the stress hormones of the, the Navy SEALs and stuff because they were trained to look after that situation, they had a plan of like that they needed to do like oh Opposite okay reaction, we need to yeah. yeah we need to go start hoarding ammunition we need to start putting up sandbags we need to start doing this we need to start doing that you know you, you, we need to start Work. getting in position yeah exactly their stress hormones went down because they were in control they were like right this is what we need to do whereas all the people who were just felt as though that they were prey and they had no control over what was going to happen their stress hormones like went through the roof mm. you know so it's just i guess it's all down to how much control you feel like you have your over a situation and yeah that, and that'd be the mentality that conor mcgregor would go into the octagon with he would go into the, the you know that with a little bit of doubt sure but Go in there with that, you know, like I've got a plan in place. I know what I'm going to do and I'm going to execute it, you know? Yeah, he's big like on the um, 
there's like an early documentary of his where he's quoting from like uh, that the secret thing that Oprah was spruiking for a while where it's sort of like um, you know positive affirmations and and visualization to like mm. create reality and stuff like oh, that yeah. I think it's good like I think like having a positive mental attitude is definitely a good thing I, th- I mean I know it's all real woo woo and all that sort of stuff but I'm, I'm a big believer in that you know like you you can will things on for yourself though mm. you know like by some somehow sort of like make, making you know making the mental connection to I don't know it sounds fucking weird but no I think there's it's, there's it's, validity to it I don't know if there's necessary, necessarily necessarily a science to it but it's like you know focus or or mm. anything you know if you study a course of something at a at a edu- education institution, you're, you're focusing on this one thing for a long period of time, so you become expert in that. Exactly, you know? and you just move towards it, and you just inherently get. I wonder when about. when we started doing that as as humans, like in in societies and stuff, where it was like you know males and and females became sort of determined by their occupation, and and very much like you know this is such and such he's a carpenter, or mm. this is such and such he's a a merchant. He's a he's yeah. a he's a spice dealer. He's a mm. because we we you know just like because back yeah. in the like hunter gatherer days there wouldn't have been any of that. It's just like we're all you know Take out here trying to live. Food. That's our job. Yeah, yeah shelter exactly. and food. And that and that's when it becomes like a, a case of trying to improve society, so that you know like this is the blacksmith and he can make metals for us and fix our shoes and and do this and that and you know like and if a blacksmith has sons maybe they can do something else and then it's just like we just span out into Mm. you know this especially you know in the advent of the internet where you can just people from all over the globe can share their information and shit yeah yeah there's never been a bigger marketplace oh yeah exactly and and that's yeah that's when it really accelerates did you listen to that um uh, I can't remember his name. That most re- one of the most recent uh, Joe Rogan podcasts. He has a physicist on. No, but I've downloaded that one. Yeah, um, that guy's pretty. Listen. Yeah, that guy's pretty intense. Yeah, is it real like super te- technical? Heavy uh, the, or? F- the first bit is because um, because Joe sort of dips Drags straight in with way. with a uh, with a really sort of technical question, um, but after that it becomes more loose and conversational, and um, and yeah, there's some good stuff in it, but um, mm. yeah. It's uh, it's it's pretty crazy. Like they're sort of just getting to AI at the moment, and they're talking about you know, people's like aversion to the idea of AI because of because of the risks that it poses. Like, mm. um, and I think the he was saying that he went to a forum and there was um, the creator of Skype was there, and he was saying that um, you know, like uh, as a potential risk, um because oxygen is actually bad for machines like or you know exposed oxidization is bad for metal yeah right so like if if you know ai's were able to figure out that okay the less oxygen there is the be- the the better we can you know um, multiply or you know better ourselves sort of thing then then the better machines will be and and make humans sort of become extinct yeah like, that's the theory that's the theory yeah it'd be interesting to see that if i just don't know like i i just what i can't wrap my head around is the concept of a machine that's not in some way run by a person that's what i mean is like there would always have it's to not be... always programmed but don't they talk about ai's when it starts like programming yeah, itself great. Yeah, well, I guess yeah, absolutely. I mean, it could almost, you know, it's an, it's a. Hasn't a, a actually, computer beaten the grandmaster in chess? We've got a, w- w- things like this are already happening. We've got a fucking yeah, engineer yeah, on board yeah. here, lately. Yeah, he's just <laughs> taking a little nap. <laughs> he's taking a little siesta. I'm <laughs> back, baby. <laughs> I'm back. This is, this is his bread and butter. Uh, all I heard, I heard AI. I was like, <laughs> wait, that's, that's my this? field, son. There's me, baby. There's me. No, nah, I think it's, 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 you know, the idea that we could pretty much from just a human brain, you know, like create sort of metal components that would your brain waves would work in with nerves and move your fingers. And, and they've done it, man. You know, like, I mean, mm. there's examples of... Guys that a guy that was like over in Germany and had a like an, a robotic arm that was in the States or vice versa and and he was like quite literally with his like with his own mind just thinking of what he wanted the limb to do and yep. like the limb would do it in that yep. other country you know yep. like they were countries apart 
And there was there was even um, a robot, an AI sort of robot, uh, was able to um, like a, a prototype. It was moving something, but uh, the lady wasn't moving it uh, herself by any sort of machines. It was moving itself, and it was programmed to do something. But then um, with her brain, so they they hooked her right up, um, and to get all the like uh, put like. Nodes and yeah, spans on her and nodes shit on, on her, her brain, brain, and then um, all Fuck. that sort of stuff coming back off. And she was able to Can't correct it. <laughs> she was able to correct the uh, robot's movements uh, yeah. just with her brain. Well, just think think about it though. Like, log, you know, so she would just be like, pick up the cup of coffee. She's just looking at it, and it's picking up and putting something in different. Um, boxes and she said instead of it was programmed to do it on one but she said that one see i feel like i feel like my brain it must be too like erratic or or schizophrenic or something to be able to do that because i feel like i would be like put it in the red and then another thing would be like no blue no blue (laughs) and it'd be like okay which one are we listening to like (laughs) oh yeah no one wants to get in on my inner dialogue (laughs) (laughs) like uh no, but that, it's a real thing. Uh, uh, yeah. They're even trying to now um, hook, get the connection between brain and uh, so physical and digital. Mm. You know, they're trying to make that. Yeah, they're trying bridge to, that gap. Yeah, they are. And Tesla, he, they even um, they're putting a lot of money into it. They're putting a lot of money into it at the moment. And you know, like when they can bridge that gap, it's just. Um, yeah, it's gonna be. Yeah, who is that? Who is that? Yeah, I just like don't guy? know what it'll look Elon like. Musk. I just don't know Elon how Musk. how like machines make more machines better. Like, but yeah, I guess you know if, if somebody a thousand times smarter than me says it's um says it's on the way and it's happening. Yeah, yeah it, it's um it, we, 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 actually I'm doing a report at the moment and it's on um uh, job loss. So they predict in the next say 10, 15 years that forty. No, thirty to forty percent of jobs uh, will be re- made yeah. redundant because of yeah, um, yeah. Oh, like truck because innovation, of, because of technological um, innovation, truck yeah, man. drivers and all sorts. They're of actually stuff. they're they're calling it the um, uh, industry four point It's the fourth industrial revolution. Mm. True. Yeah, it's coming right up, and, and it's it's when they cook <laughs> coming soon to a cinema <laughs> near you. <laughs> it's coming right up, <laughs> and. Um, and it's gonna be, it's gonna make smart factories. So you'll have these smart factories that will be web designed every step of the way, from like manufacturing to like retailing. Mm. It's gonna be all automated. The Ubers, so the Ubers have just bought in, um, and they put a heap of money into getting uh, like big sort of drones with um, uh, little capsules in them, so you can sort of just fly off and shit. Oh, Ooh, dead Uber. set for yeah. people. I thought you were meaning for like package delivery. No, and shit. man. Oh, they because they're doing that, that already. Yeah, yeah, they've already done that. Yeah. And now this is for um. Yeah. Now this is for yeah more for people. Like, Imagine mm. when that's so Fuck. super commonplace, like that. You know, d- drones are delivering. <laughs> dr- <laughs> Imagine hectic turbulence in a self in, in a self driving oh. fucking yeah. drone yeah. like Uber drone. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> what the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this guy reaching for his wallet? <laughs> what have you lost, man? <laughs> now you're dropping me home. <laughs> uh, please. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, it's all in the mix now. Oh, man. And it, that's it's why exciting. it's, it's, it's exciting. super exciting. And they actually made like all of our topics on very, um, very recent up-to-date stuff. And there is so many articles out there. If you want to jump on... And every, I like how that's what they say, but, you know, there are so many different sides to the story because you don't know who they were trying to push either. Mm. So uh, you get um, these people that say not until the end of the century and then you see people that say 10, 15 years. Oh, you definitely. Know? Yeah. And that's yeah. the Elon Musks and the, and the people of yeah. that, that, what is it, 2045 or, or, or your 2045 project or whatever that Elon Musk and... Ray Kurzweil and, you know, that Russian billionaire mm. and all those people are on, which is that idea that, you know, by 2045 that humans and machines are going to are going to have completely integrated. You know what that – they that's called the the singularity. Yeah. That's yeah, singularity. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, singularity. That's, that's exactly well, that's what That's when 
out like robots and us are pretty much yeah, one. One. And then it will soon be robots because it's just yeah. that's what that's what a lot of people are writing It'll about. Be trippy. Mm. It'll be so trippy. And and the, the the crazy thing is is that it everything is unbelievable until it's until you've seen it, you know? Mm. So you pretty much Cars that parked themselves, if you went back to when we were, you know, kids in the 90s, mm. would seem like, you know... Video phones. Yeah. yeah Vi- video the phone idea of a video phone used to trip me out as yep. a kid. Yeah, exactly. Even a, just a colour screen got me. I was like, mm. And we've only now, like, really in, in the last sort of 10 years, 10, 15, 20 years, I suppose, like, put the foot on the pedal of the internet, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, Here's, I've got, I've got a fact here. Um, there's been more data uploaded... To the internet in the last two years than there was before that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 There is so much. It's, so it's much. big data, and this is what the fourth industrial revolution is bringing. It's bringing like fuller interconnected cloud networks. Um, it's bringing Internet of Things, mm. um, big data, and like uh, I can't remember the other ones, yeah. but that's what it's bringing. So well, everything's about to get a lot of faster and cheaper. Well, that's like uh, all, all the governments are pretty much, you know, saying that that, that the future is really in innovation, you know, in, mm. in really coming up with creating industries and, and all that sort of yeah. stuff. Like industries that we don't even know exist yet will exist in, you know, yep. in another t- 10 or 15 years. Exactly. You know? It's like, you know, when someone invented the computer, well, then you had computer repairmen, you had internet, you had all this type of thing. Exactly. You know? Absolutely. It leads yeah. on from one thing, but... Yeah, like our kids now, like I can't stress this enough, need to know how to get around computers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's that's essential. it. They, that's, um, that's where the money's going to be. Uh, and like they, they're already learning how to code and like that's a super important skill uh, is learning oh, really? how to work computers. I don't even understand what coding is as such. Yeah. Well, that's like coding is like, you know, you need to like this is I, I don't understand either is the answer to your question and my, my rudimentary understanding of it is like, you know, the codes that you need to put in to create a web page to, yeah. to make everything do what it does, there has to be all of this yeah. instruction behind yeah. it. Like, There's so many different languages out out there because I've, I'm actually doing a second major in computer software engineering. Right. So I'm building, sure. learning to sort of build my own. We're just sort of learning around different languages and it is like learning another language. Like I struggled for a bit, but then there was this real big, period of like grace period where everything had sort of paid off and I was getting it and I could see what was happening right. that's a totally different sort of feel sure. um, yeah. and it's just like another language but um, I've you can and once you're at this sort of stage you can teach yourself and that's what you you can either program on um, so on software so you can actually sort of um, write programs on there for games graphics um, I'm doing a face detection thing um, on a, an autonomous UAV. So it, it, anything, anything. Mm, fuck yeah. Mm. It's crazy like when you think about it, you probably like, you know, average life expectancy for a man would be like 80 years or something 80, like that. 86 so, or so 87 I think it is. Yeah, so mm. you sit, depending on what age you're sitting at, you know, you've got X amount of years left like, and, uh, and that's just your sort of like brief window that you get. That's your generation yep. or whatever. Mm. And like there's all these generations before you and, and, and so many more to come. But like, you know, you see the world change a little bit in that sort of segment oh, yeah. of time. And I feel like we've got this incredibly like, uh, I don't know, like one that's going to be full of like a oh, bunch yeah. of changes. It's, you getting, know? it's going to be exciting. Like mm. the fourth industrial revolution, the last one was in the early 90s. And like imagine seeing I mean, we, but, but mechanization. Like, saying, like we're going to see a big growth um, and it's going to be really interesting. But we've already seen some pretty what I would consider old school, like no technology at all, you know. And then when we sort of die, like at that level, yeah, what well, it's going to be, it's going to be scary. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, definitely. But, um, yeah, like I think um, we will have seen, you know, we will have seen it change. But like you're saying, it's like you won't even really notice it. It'll just be like it'll start to integrate more and more until it's like, oh, yeah, I've always had video phone. That's yeah. never been a strange concept, yep. you know, like. Yep. And it'll just continue until we've got super intelligent machines. Maybe I don't know. That's yeah. what that's what a p- few you, of these like experts that I've been hearing on, yeah. on podcasts and things are saying. So, well, it's that like you think it's always sort of um, it's always sort of learning because 
you know how like they're sort of practicing. They've got Siri here, so they're it, they're constantly trying to understand you better. Mm. You know, so it's just like so when you talk to someone like. Like if we converse, you know, like, hey, yeah. how are you going? What's the, what are the responses? What's what are they asking? And all this, so they're learning off us, like a hundred, you know, all the time, a hundred percent of the time. Mm-hmm. They're always like um, making those algorithms better and faster. Yeah, and more I went efficient. to I went to dinner in, in my last night in Malaysia with this dude, who's uh, who's about twenty five, um, Chinese Malay dude, but spoke like decent English, and he had like proper Tourette's, like. Would um would like hit the table and like yo yo oh, man oh, like sorry sorry for that. <laughs> like but um we actually like checked into this guest house like and he was behind the desk or whatever and so we sort of start like conversing over like oh, okay yeah this is our passports or whatever like and he's like yeah yeah and saying shit like that and I sort of like clocked it straight away I was like oh, okay he's got some sort of tick like going on here and uh, he was telling I'm us about go over and head kick him <laughs> 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 I'm gonna ask him a question. <laughs> <laughs> he was telling us about like, have you heard of Aussie Man? I don't know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, commentates he like, things. You watch Aussie Man? And I was like, nah, nah. What, what's Aussie Man? And he's like, nah, wanker. Nah, wanker. <laughs> like saying this out of some shit. And then he was like counting our money, like w- wanker, like doing like shit like this. Like, but he was like, he. he the, Would you call me? <laughs> <laughs> the vibe he gave. The vibe he gave off. Now though, I am like, gonna he, head kick you. <laughs> But he was like, you could just tell that it was just his tics, and he was like, he was a, a, a like a genuine dude anyway. Yeah, but, yeah, um, definitely, definitely. And he uh, he ended up like inviting us to dinner and shit. So like we we go basically like to they call white people like falungs and shit and sort of Southeast Asia, so like like gringo type of thing. So like two falungs in this full on like Chinese <laughs> hockey market, like whereas no oh, other white people yeah. whatsoever. He's ordering up all this like awesome. um like blood sausage noodle soup uh, and and all sorts of shit oh, all, yeah, like. Right? Fried, um, like deep fried oysters and shit like this, Oof. and um, like proper uh, ch- Chinese fare and yeah, shit. And right. He's there, like banging the table and like, <laughs> <laughs> like. But he was like, he was super intelligent, man. He had the, he had like an intense degree in IT something. I couldn't couldn't tell you what what sort of like. <laughs> so he said it was. <laughs> oh, but you could you could tell he was an intelligent cat. He was, oh, okay. and, and for like you know his. Um, you know, geographical location, somebody who could like communicate as well as him. He's obviously educated. That's yeah. true. And like, yeah. and obviously has had, um, you know, he's been to see neurologists about his Tourette's and he's like, you know, a lot of people over there wouldn't be able to afford that shit. No way. You know, so like you could tell. Um, but yeah, fuck, it must have been a funny scene for other people. Eh? Just oh, like, shit, yeah. uh, like us two whiteys cruising around <laughs> with this with this dude with <laughs> Tourette's. Tourette. But fuck, man, I felt like straight up Anthony Bourdain sitting in this um sitting in this little market, like having the most delicious mm. soups and shit. It was raining outside. Like these little Chinese donuts that are basically just like cinnamon donuts, but you dip them like in these noodle chili noodle broths and Ooh. shit like that. And mm. It Get a bit of this delicious. like garlic garlic chili paste on your on your chopsticks before you take a bite. So you put the chili paste in and then, oh, you, and right. then you get a bite and like mm-hmm. doing all this different shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got the uh, the Cowboys game going on here, so we'll probably wrap it up there, I think. But um, who's winning that anyway? In the law. Twenty minutes. Come and in. come and give us your uh, opinion on the start of the NRL season so far, boys. Give us a, a brief breakdown to finish with, and we'll uh, sign off for the fans for episode twenty four. In the books I haven't watched that much of it Other than a few of the Bronx games uh, There's only one undefeated team now In the NRL to kick off uh, Roosters have just got beat there Roosters in Melbourne were both 4-0 and Roosters have only just gone down to Manly there At home really? Two Roosters mm, So yeah. they, they got knocked off That's two wins in a row for Manly They've surprised a few people As have uh, my team the Dragons They're three from four the f- oh. f- First round beat Premiership favourites Penrith Then beat the uh, Lost to Para. Beat the Sharkies at Sharks, defending premiers, and then just got the job done against the Warriors last weekend. So they're third, same position as the Cowboys. Broncos eighth, not that crash hot at the moment. Probably dropped lower than that now. Bronx, well, they're two and three now. They lost to Canterbury last night in the start of round five. So I'm sure we'll be out of the eight this week. All the best teams. <laughs> they have, oh, the Broncos, Broncos draw has been straight fucking venom, actually. It's like that'll, yeah, they'll yeah. be one of those Second teams. Second hardest that, draw to Parramatta, I believe. Is that right? Yeah. yeah they'll, they'll be playing hard Broncos, games. Broncos on the other side of State of Origin will be one of those teams that roar into like a nice fourth or fifth or something for mine. Like that, yeah, that, that's what yeah. I think. I couldn't or, see him winning a minor premiership or anything like that. But or, Origin's always a tough time for the Broncos too, big, isn't it? 
biggest letdown so far as of this year is the Warriors so far. Really? Yeah, ma- massively. O- Isaac Luke, Sean Johnson, Roger Tuvasashek yep. in a spine with Foran, who's going to come back maybe this weekend. He was meant to play against the Dragons. Kieran Foran, he's been through a lot of bullshit. That but mental he's a issues, le- yeah. new starting New Zealand player, like one a p- test player, legit player. Yeah. Did his hammy before he's meant to be his first game last week. So he's been named this week to play. If he plays, they've got the New Zealand team's fucking spine on there. So you'd like to think that they could get their shit together, but at the moment, just playing awful. Yep. To a Varsashek, he was a star, you know. He was. At, at the Roosters, he's a star, yep. gone over to New Zealand and now being named the captain. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's tricky. Is it too much too soon on a young player like that? But he, he did get concussed in week two yeah. and then had to take time off and shit. So. There's still How's time the sports for almanac here? <laughs> NRL, NRL obsessed. In a like, breath. Yeah. NRL obsessed. I, I want to <laughs> ask. I want to so ask. That's the first month. Who are your, who, <laughs> who are your current in, top four? In a word. Into that DM, please. Like. <laughs> who are your current top four, Matt? To finish the year, top no, four? No, yeah, at the moment. Who, who would you pick as top four material? Uh, Rabbitohs are over here. Storm, Storm Panthers... Canberra Cowboys is the four, four. I reckon. Yeah. Panthers. Oh, yeah, yeah for, pr- Panthers at the start of the year, premiership favourites uh-huh. to win. They have a really good roster, but young. I don't know if it is too soon for okay. Panthers, but on their day, if they can get their shit together, once like Mansell comes back and shit like that, there are yeah. some test quality. Who are in the that others team. again? They've just got James Tamo this year as well into that pack. So no, sorry. Who who are your other top four? Uh, Storm Panthers, Canberra. If they can get their shit together, they've got the, the list. If they can stay healthy, Canberra can be there and the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. What do you reckon, mm-hmm. Mick? You're, you're a, a league man yourself as well. Am I far off there? No, I like, I like your four, but at the moment, I'm, I'm loving your home team. Mm. Yeah, man. I reckon oh. yeah, St. George. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've, they've I've started the, well. They're at, not too at, bad. At the start of the year, I legitimately thought, I said to people, we'll, th- we'll finish between 14 and 16. Yeah. I, I had us shot in the foot, but... Seems I, Paul definitely Vaughan, in the eight. Paul Vaughan and McInnes, the two prop and hooker that we've bought, have just changed the direction of the team and the shit's going well for us so far. But it's a long season, the NRL. 26 rounds, one of the longest seasons like, in sport, like, in contact sport anyway. And uh, long way to go for them. A couple of key injuries could really do us in the dot. <laughs> 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 and my final note. <laughs> That's a wrap for now, Knock Off Nation. <laughs>